find f of g of negative 1. All right. Now, before we start this, I'm sure somebody, at least one of you, are probably wondering, well, is there a difference between f of g of negative 1 and g of f of negative 1? Does that order of that matter? Since I put it up there, probably. But let's see why. All right, so let's start with f of g of negative 1. So let's zone in to the middle of this problem. G of negative 1. You know how to find that, right? What does that mean? What does G of negative 1 mean? Plug in negative 1 for X. Okay? So, um, let's just kind of do this over to the side. Okay? Let's just do G of negative 1. That is 2 times negative 1 squared minus 7 times negative 1 plus 4. Okay, remember our discussion yesterday about parentheses and square and negative numbers. 2 times negative 1 squared is 2. The exponent happens first. Plus 7 plus 4, so that gives us 13. So, since g of negative 1 is 13, we are going to replace g of negative 1 with 13. G of negative 1 is equal to 13, so we replace it with 13. Now, we need to find F of 13. That means plug in 13 for X in our F function. So that's 13 minus 5, which is 8. F of G of negative 1 is equal to 8. Now, it's really not that. You start on the inside and work your way out. B. We're just changing the order. Same, same original x value. We're changing the order. So we start by finding f of negative 1. So that's negative 1 minus 5, which is negative 6. This is why the order matters. We're not plugging the same number in the g anymore. We're plugging negative 6 in the g. <clears throat> so now we plug negative 6 into our g function. So, let's see here. Negative 6 squared is 36 times 2 is 72. Plus 7 times 6 is 42. Plus 4. So that's what? 110, 114, 118. Okay. Two very, very different answers. And the only difference was I changed the order of where we plugged in negative 1. Did we plug it into, how do you check it? Uh, um, well, I mean, one way to check it is you can do this in your calculator. You can, you can do this. You can type in, that's a good question. Type in uh, F in the Y1. Type in G into y2 all right and then to do the composition you have to do this you have to press um okay <clears throat> go to your home menu okay just go back to your your clear screen you go to bars or the y bars and you press enter and that's where all the y1s and stuff show up so press y1 parentheses, y, uh, bars, y bars, y2, parentheses, negative 1, close all those parentheses. Okay, so what I just did was y1 had my f function in it, y2 had my g function in it, so f of g of negative 1. I just did that with y2. Oh man, what did I do wrong? Too many parentheses? Okay. <laughs> what did I do wrong? Excuse me, eight. Okay. Yeah, you need to show me the work, but that is one way that you can do it. And then let's check the other one. You just switch the order. Y2, parentheses, then Y1. Put in the negative 1. Close them. 118. Okay. Pretty awesome, right? Huh? <coughs> you type in the function, right? 
Okay. Let's do one more. Let's do g of f of 4. So the order most definitely matters when we're talking about compositions of functions. Now, just remember, and we struggled, a few of us struggled with this when we were dealing with functions before, this does not mean multiply everything by 4. Okay, this is the same thing, and this is why I favor this notation with the parentheses as opposed to the little circle because it's a lot more obvious that you're not multiplying by 4, that you're plugging 4 into your function. Okay, um, f of 4, 4 minus 5 is negative 1, so that's g of negative 1. Well, we already found that a second ago, g of negative 1 was 13. Okay. Yeah. Second step. I mean, that's what I always do on my paper. You don't have to. You don't have to do that. Um, I'm just. Yeah. Uh, yes. That would be the normal way. Yes. We just need to recap the G of four. So plug four into F, plug that into the G. Okay. All right. <clears throat> now, you may have a table, okay? You may have a table like this that may not give you an equation for F and an equation for G. They may just give you a table of select values, okay? You handle it exactly the same way. It's actually less work. You just have to be able to read the table. Let's look at this. F of G of negative 3. All right, this is just your ability to read a table, okay? If x is negative 3, what's the value of g? When x is negative 3, what's the value of g? 4. All right, so then what is f of 4? When x is, is 4, what is f? Negative 9. So f of g of negative 3 is negative 9. Okay, the first column are your x values. The second two columns are the f of x. So when x is negative 3, f of negative 3 is negative 2. f of 0 is 2. f of 2 is 0. f of 4 is negative 9. g of negative 3 is 4. g of 0 is 5. This is just like a table of log values. I have two functions up here for the same x values. Two different functions, same x value. Okay? Let's do one more. You see it now? Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, so g of f of 2 starts in the middle, okay? So we'll start with 2 on the inside. Find 2. F of 2 is 0, so we replace F of 2 with 0, because that's what it's equal to. What is G of 0? 5. Okay? Let's do F of G of 2. Let's change the order of that. What is G of 2? Negative 1. What's F of negative 1? I don't know. Somebody knows, but I don't know. Uh, they didn't give me enough information. This cannot be determined. Sometimes that happens. If the output of the inside function is not an input on your table, then you cannot determine that value. Okay? Pretty simple, right? Maybe? And just a sheer plugging the entire function into another function. Okay? So if our function f of x is x squared and g of x is the square root of x plus 1, let's find the two compositions, f of g and g of x, or excuse me, g of f. And then once we do that, I want us to look at the graphs really quickly. Okay? So, f 
of g of x. Again, I don't like that notation. I prefer this notation, so anytime I see that other one, I always rewrite it. The one with the circle. Yeah, I don't like the fog. I like the parentheses. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to replace g of x with its equation. Its equation is the square root of x plus 1. Okay, replace the g of x with its equation, the square root of x plus 1. Now, if that were a number, if that were f of 3, what would we do? Plug in 3 for x, right? Okay, so let's do that. It's not a number, but let's plug that expression in for x. Just like we would put 3 in the place of x, we're just putting an expression in the place of the x. What happens when we square a square root? They cancel. They cancel. They cancel. So f of g of x is equivalent to x plus 1. <laughs> now, we know that the order matters. Let's see what happens. Let me do this in a different color. Let's see what happens when we do g of f of x. Let's see what's different. So I'm going to replace f of x with its function, thank you, x squared. And then I'm going to plug x squared into my g of x function everywhere I see x. So I replace that x with x squared. I replace it. Okay? Just like if it were a number, I would replace the x with 3. I'm just replacing the x with x squared. We can't simplify that, okay? We cannot simplify that because of that plus. That is g of f of x. So f of g of x results in a linear function, x plus 1. g of f of x results in a square root function. Those are going to look very, very different from each other, okay? Okay?